Lakeland Public Television presents Currents. Hello, welcome to Lakeland Currents. I'm Bethany Wesley. In the heart of Bemidji's downtown, located in the historic Mayflower building, resides the launch pad. The launch pad is a co-working space that brings together emerging and well-established entrepreneurs, freelancers, and professionals. They come together to co-work, to collaborate, to network, and to learn from each other. The Launchpad provides resources and support to help entrepreneurs grow their businesses by connecting them with mentors, business consultants, peer networking groups, and more. Tonight, we welcome to the program Dave Hengel, the Executive Director of Greater Bemidji, the Economic Development Group that founded the Launchpad, and Samantha Nino, the owner of and presentation designer for Red Zest Design. Welcome. Thanks for coming. You bet, Bethany. Thank you. Glad to be here. Dave, take us back a little bit. When you were first talking about how to set up this launch pad, were you hearing from entrepreneurs and local business owners that this was something that would be helpful? Yeah, in fact, I'll take you back a couple, three years uh, when Greater Bemidji made it, its transformation. Uh, one of its major focus areas was going to be entre entrepreneurship and supporting our entrepreneurs. And it's really central to economic development because I've challenged people to think about what is it uh, tell me a business in northern Minnesota of any substance that wasn't started by a local entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And you think about it from Potlatch to Articat to um, DigiKey. I mean, all the ones that you think about, Marvin Windows in northern Minnesota, were started by local people, mm -hmm. by local entrepreneurs. And so the board saw that as a really critical element. And so that it has always been a tenant, if you will, a focus area of, of Greater Bemidji to how is it we can support our entrepreneurs. And then all of a sudden, uh, a crop of entrepreneurs started to grow. And you've probably seen it locally uh, with uh, folks like uh, Sam, like uh, uh, the folks at Bemidji Brewing, uh, Tuto Bene, and, and all these, uh, Air Corps Aviation, all these companies started coming up with young entrepreneurs. And I thought, this is the time. Uh, and so we gathered them together and they started talking and truthfully um, they've kind of taken it over and it's the right thing. It is, it, is, uh, it is a program that's been really fun for me as a person who's been around quite a while to watch grow uh, into something that's pretty cool. Would you say that co-working space or collaborative space like this, is it like an emerging trend? Is Bemidji, are we going to see these in different regional centers? Is Bemidji on the edge of something? Yeah, I think we're on, uh, well, uh, it certainly is happening in major metro areas. It's not happening in areas our size. Okay. And so I think you're, uh, you're going to see this more. Although I will say that there, there, there does need to be a certain level of um, capacity, if you will, uh, where if you have a co-working space as one person sitting in there by themselves all day long, it's not exactly what the co-working space was intended to do. Okay. And so I do think there is there a, a limitation there. Uh, we are right at it. Uh, I do think, however, for our size community, we are on the leading edge on this one. And truthfully, I, I would love to suggest that I knew this was gonna succeed. Uh, but we did this for a pilot uh, purposes about a year ago now. Okay. Uh, we opened, and it's clearly uh, been way more successful than I would have anticipated uh, to a point now where I've got to decide what's next uh, for the launch pad. So. Awesome. Are the entrepreneurs themselves helping kind of guide that then as you look to the future? You bet. In fact, there's uh, seven or eight, I believe, on a kind of a, what I call a coordinating council or an entrepreneur council that really uh, decide. It's not my decision. One of the things we did early on is we made a trip over to Fargo, who's done pretty well on things like One Million Cups and entrepreneur development and a thing called the Prairie Den, which is similar to the launch pad. And, and one of the first things I heard uh, from the leader there is sometimes economic development folks like me have to get out of the way. Oh. And so I've attempted to allow that group of entrepreneurs to take it to where they need it to go. And so you'll see, uh, and, and I would think Sam would acknowledge, I try and stay in the background, <laughs> which is very difficult for me to do. So. Tell us a little bit about exactly how it works. Do people have to commit to coming 40 hours a week, five days a week, and office space? Well, two things. One is the launch pad is a little bit more than just a co-working space, but the co-working space, they can decide how they want to come. If it's a, Maybe it's a business visitor who happens to be in town and needs access to meeting space, and they can do a daily pass. Or you can go to all the way to every day of the week. And so there is membership levels. Uh, typically, what we'll do is allow people to test it for free. So come for a couple, three months, see if you like it. Does it, is this, uh, does it work for you to feel right for you? And then we'll talk about membership levels. But really, it's pretty cheap. Uh, and this is not meant to be uh, uh, any kind of a, if you will, a, a sustainable money maker type of thing. It really is to support these young entrepreneurs. And so uh, the little bit we do ask for is really more just a, 
about commitment. Okay. So. Awesome. I want to hear from a business owner yourself, if you would have be so kind. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about what Red Zest Design is in the history of your business. Sure. Well, Red Zest Design, um, I'm the owner of Red Zest Design. Mm -hmm. We do presentation design for CEOs, for trainers, and for executive directors. And many of these folks are, well, they're all over the country. It doesn't have to be just business owners and trainers here. I get to work with um, people from all over the U.S. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. So how long ago did you start? Started in 2009, okay. um, and I was in the Bemidji area. I actually live um, west of Bemidji, okay. um, near Bagley, Minnesota, but find myself using Bemidji um, and the amazing resources and talent here as my regional hub, um, and I'm in this area a lot. Okay. So it's fair to say that you work mostly outside your home, but then you also have this membership to Launchpad where you come in. How frequently do you come? Yeah, good question. I am at Launchpad about once a week. Okay. Um, and I want to stay, even though I'm, I'm working with many of my clients are outside of Minnesota, I want to stay plugged into my community. I love Bemidji. And I... Uh, I'm in, of the mindset to um, create the community that I want to live in. I am so proud that we have a thriving business community and we have cool arts and culture things going on and I want to be part of that and Launchpad allows me to still stay plugged in. If there wasn't something like the Launchpad that existed, would it be hard to keep that physical presence here? I mean, were you in a place where you were wanting like full-time office space or no, this was really what you were looking for. This was actually perfect. I mean, I used to, um, before Launchpad, I would go to the coffee shop or the deli um, once a week if I had, you know, meetings planned. But what's, what's amazing about having this particular space is the access to not only other entrepreneurs and business owners that who are like me, either a freelancer or um, a, working out of their home, but um, mentors and there are, the SBDC is in the Small Business Development Center uh, resources, they're right at Launchpad. Um, and then you have people kind of checking in on how you're doing, asking about your business, like there's some accountability there that you can't necessarily get when you're sitting at your home, at your own desk, and well, it, it's just a much different space. I'm trying to picture how this will work. You have different workspaces, you have a couple different people who have different projects, they're in different industries, they're all pursuing different things. Yeah. How do you collaborate or what is the benefit then? If you're not all kind of in sync that way, how does that benefit really come out? That's a really good question. And I was at a recent retreat and someone talked about engineered serendipity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that? I don't, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, but basically creating the conditions for um, surprising encounters, or good encounters to happen. And Launchpad is a space like that. You have people from other industries, like you described, working on different projects, but they bring really interesting skills. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a Launchpad member that we sh happen to share the same day. We're, we're at Launchpad the same day, usually Wednesdays. And she's a, a recruiter for a Fortune 500 company. And she was showing me how she uses LinkedIn and what and how you can better use LinkedIn to find people to work with or even bump up your LinkedIn profile of how to get maximize that tool. Well, when would I talk to someone necessarily about that? Unless I was looking to um, you know, engineer my, re my resume a certain way. But we just had that conversation. I'm like, I never would have guessed that that would have happened, but it did. That's interesting. Yeah, it was really fun. Is it fair to say that entrepreneurship as you, especially when you're first getting started, yeah, pretty lonely. I mean, you're kind of one man <laughs> shop, one woman shop. You know, is it nice to have be able to go through some of those learning curves with other people? Yes, and that may be um, more of a topic with entrepreneur meetup. But what it, entrepreneurship and owning your own business can be kind of lonely at times. I mean, there's a lot of pressure to do well. I know people talk about failure is a good thing and that you need to fail fast and learn from it. And um, But I mean, we honestly want to succeed too. <laughs> so to be around a, a positive, supportive group encouraging you to succeed and they care about your success and just mm -hmm. surrounding yourself with positivity that, hey, when it's tough, that other people have been there and they've they've been on the other side of the wall, the other side of the hurdle, 
hey, just hang in there some a, a little bit longer, you can get there too. If you ask the entrepreneurs, and, the, and we've had the conversations with the, the governing group, if you will, the most important thing they care about is that networking, that ability to have somebody that can encourage them, support them, know what they're going through, because every time, you know, there's ups and downs and there's hills and valleys, and, uh, and that comes out every time as the most important thing that they get is the ability to connect with people who are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and an entrepreneur is a unique creature, as you know, uh, and that uh, they need the support of each other uh, because particularly in a town our size, uh, that, that uh, the ability to have that support network, that social network, just to bounce ideas and, and get an attaboy every once in a while is a good thing. So. Yeah. You started your business back in 2009, yes. right? So obviously the Launchpad wasn't there then. Did you kind of seek out some of the things that the Launchpad is now providing as you started your business that it would have been helpful to kind of have in one location? That's a good question. Um, and yes, I did seek out things that now the Launchpad is helping to provide. I mean, there were other things that were just important for um, a business owner as well. Like I joined the Chamber. Chamber is really important. Um, there's another business networking group in town called BNI. Um, that was a great way to network with other professionals. Um, but adding to that, Launchpad, um, at, well, the entrepreneur meetups specifically on Wednesdays is free. It's open to the public, it's open to students, it's open to uh, mentors, to retirees, and to our entrepreneurs that are looking to create something. I mean, we, we value the gifts that people bring to this community, and we want to hear ideas and support each other. That part could have, or was there in like informal settings when I was first starting in 2009, mm -hmm. but I had to actively seek it. Yeah. Right now, it seems like uh, Launchpad provides a very convenient way for the, that engineered serendipity, those things to happen in that space. Let's talk a little bit about those meetups because I know that's yeah. a big, that brings a lot of people downtown and to into the Launchpad. Mm -hmm. They're held weekly. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what their goals are. What are they? Well, I'll, I'll talk about the goals, but Sam is really more engaged in the meetups than I am. Uh, truthfully, they meet every week. Uh, we had gone to, as I mentioned, Fargo, uh, mm -hmm. and there's a thing called One Million Cups, which is spread throughout the nation. It's a it's a weekly meetup, if you will. Okay. Uh, that, but it's uh, uh, we. This is our version of the One Million Cups. It's an opportunity for for an entrepreneur who might have an idea to stand up in front of other entrepreneurs and and test their idea on them and say, "What do you think?" and and what I love is when the, they start mixing it up and asking questions like, well, have you thought of this? Have you talked to this person? Have you tried this? And from my perspective, the most important question is always the last one, which is this. It says, uh, they will ask, what is it Bemidji can do to support you? And that for me in economic development, of course, is a very, very powerful question. And so I get to listen and really start hearing the trends that, that are things that are significant to entrepreneurs and, and new business owners. And so that's why the meetup for me is a critical, critical thing. Every, it's the most important thing I do every Wednesday. Oh, awesome. So. So tell me, how do they go about organizing the meetups, or how are you looking for you know people who come and talk? I mean, I know there's specific categories that they try to fit them under, correct? Yeah. When we first started, we had a very specific agenda. Each each week would be different, but one week would be a new pitch idea. Uh, one week would be a entrepreneur panel discussion. Then we'd have, um, let's see. Existing business owners talk mm -hmm. about a, a new service or product offering they're thinking about. Um, the fourth one was open oh, forum. Open <laughs> forum, and then the education and learn. That's right. um, we had mentors and like SBDC type folks come in and talk about a topic. Since uh, probably in the last six months, mm -hmm. we're a little more organic than that, okay. in that we're looking for business owners or potential business owners that are wanting to get some feedback on an idea that they have, but they, they're, they're stuck. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would like to present their idea to the group and maybe have that question and answer time, which is usually about 20 to 30 minutes oh, of that hour. Um, to really get some feedback uh, and new perspective on a, something that they're struggling with or they just can't get past uh, something that they're stuck on. And you already mentioned, but you said they're free. This isn't actually something you have to do to be a Launchpad member. No. This is open to whomever wants to sit in. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, and it's a really diverse group. I mean, uh, as Sam said, there's there's uh, seniors there, there are people who are just interested in the person presenting there, and then there's the regulars. And it's folks who 
And and again, it, it, typically it's between 25 and 40, 50 people in this space. And again, one of those things I would have never expected. But it, yeah, completely free. Uh, an opportunity to come listen to what's going on. We encourage particularly entrepreneurs to be there. And of course, we encourage particularly entrepreneurs to engage in the dialogue. But mm -hmm. to be there and, and listen in, uh, is really uh, quite an event for some folks. And I'll give you an example, Jim Benson. Okay. And many, many in the community know Jim Benson. He doesn't miss one. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's his favorite part of his life right now in a sense that he <laughs> loves to listen to ideas and he loves to watch them sprout here in our community and so he doesn't miss one. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about some of the um, extra services that also sure. are there in addition to just the co-working mm -hmm. space. We talked a little bit about the Small Business Development Center, but what is their role with the Launchpad? What do they do there? They. Uh, are located there, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, once a week, uh, uh, Grant Opegard, who's one of the consultants of the SBDC, is there every Monday. Uh, so a, as a small business owner, existing business owner, or somebody who's an entrepreneur thinking about a new idea and want to uh, bounce it off, somebody who's got incredible amounts of experience uh, for free, they can come anytime on a Monday uh, to connect up with Grant. Uh, also, they have a few other consultants. Uh, that are a little more specific, one on social media, one on marketing, that oh, type of thing, okay. that are also there on occasion. Uh, so people just have to keep an eye on the schedule. But really, it's about them uh, coming and using the space to meet up with the, with the local uh, Bemidji area businesses and entrepreneurs. They like it. Uh, they've seen a really big uptick in their service use as well. And they, they, uh, they like to mix it up with folks like Sam. And so it's really neat uh, that the SBDC is going to uh, partnered with us uh, in the space. Is it fair to say that if you're in the launch pad, if you're kind of there, you feel more open to just kind of approaching them for help versus just like oh, a cold call and yes. making an appointment and making it so official? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe that to be true. And I, I, in fact, I think you'll see if, if uh, people who are, if we have a social event at a lunchtime on a Monday, their, their usage goes way up just oh. because people are stopping in. They see oh. them there. I mean, it's personable. I mean, mm -hmm. it's person to person mm -hmm. at that point. Okay. Um, one of the other things that's there is the Marketing Assistant and Research Services Program. It's called MARS, right, right. from BSU. Tell right. us a little bit about what that is and how uh, they help. BSU has a suite, an actual space on in, in the Mayflower, It's uh, and they run their Marketing Assistants and Research Solutions. So if a company needs marketing services, if they need some research done, some data research, some uh, online type research, whatever it may be, uh, they are available uh, to help the, the, these companies. And I'll give you an example, the most recent one. Uh, and, and by the way, it's uh, led by a, a professor, a uh, marketing professor, Kelly LaVenture. Uh, and then she has several of the top students in the marketing department. So that's the core that are there, six or seven uh, that come in. Um, a recent study they just got done doing and will be releasing soon is uh, Nielsen Foundation hired them to, uh, to, to really dig into the skills gap issue and the challenges our companies are having in terms of getting access to the people they need to succeed and grow. And so they were uh, interviewed well over 100 people, or 100 businesses oh, uh, in our community came through the Mayflower to visit with them about, um, about uh, the, the, the issue of the skills gap. Um, obviously, that's technologies. There's a lot of technologies there, not just for the meetings, but right. for yeah. people do teleconferencing or whatever. So yeah, I, and I got to thank Paul Bunyan for that, truthfully. When we did the Mayflower building, the Mayflower building was about a $1.4 million project, of which you would be, the city provided substantial funding, the county provided substantial funding, the Nielsen Foundation, the Blandon Foundation. Paul Bunyan committed $50,000 uh, worth of technology into the building. And so one of the appeals, not just because of the services around them, but the fact that you can have access to you know, gigabit Wi-Fi speeds is significant. And Paul Bunyan provided that for free. If you go into our boardroom area, it's, it's a really funky, cool space that, that everything is wireless. And so projecting, uh, projecting your presentation, things like that are all wireless. And, and again, that is because of them. All the security is also because of them. So I got to be thankful to Paul Bunyan for their commitment there. Cool. As a tech dork, <laughs> the boardroom is amazing. I love the screens <laughs> and the fast internet. I mean, it's such a gift. So yeah. love the space for the tech. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it is It is great creative space. It screams yes. creativity. In fact, one of the entrepreneurs, um, Jason Brodina from Choice Therapy, was talking about how it brings tradition and and funky cool together, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's creativity, he calls it, and so that's yeah. really neat. 
So, oh, that's great. Yeah. And then um, you also have staff on hand, and one of the staff members is very familiar with some of the revolving loan mm -hmm. funds in the area. Yep. In fact, uh, she runs them all, ba uh, basically from uh, my funds to HRDCs uh, to Paul Bunyan Communications Loan Fund to all the city funds that happen surround, including the city of Bemidji, she runs, uh, happens to manage. And so it is a great entry point for anybody who's looking for financing to start their company. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Have you used or have you heard stories from people who have really tapped into some of these resources and really helped them get to that next stage in business? That's a good question. Uh, well, recently, just about, about two months ago, I actually worked with a, a small business development center. I'm working to change my business from a sole proprietor to uh, a corporation. So trying to get advice on how to do that smartly and if that's the right decision for my business, the folks at the SBDC help me through that uh, process so oh, cool. for me specifically it's been really helpful for others you know I haven't I haven't talked to others specifically um, how they use that since most of the time it's confidential information mm -hmm. um, oh, but yep for me it's been helpful so as people start finding the launch pad if they start as new entrepreneurs is the goal or is there a worry that as they grow that they kind of outgrow the launch pad I mean or does it help you along in every stage of your business <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd love to answer that. I hope yeah. they do. <laughs> I really do hope they do. I mean, it is not in, and in some cases, and and Sam's might be an example, it, uh, the launch pad's a perfect space to, to uh, maybe sustain your company forever because you can, basically, she can work anywhere. But there are some that are launch pad members currently today that someday will have their own facility and their own building, and, and that's, you know, of course, one of the goals I'd like to see. Uh, but it, it's different than a traditional in incubator. When you think of an incubator, it's, it's I'm renting this space in, in this uh, shop and I'm here for two years and then I'm getting kicked out into the community. Um, it is different than that. I mean, you could potentially always work out of the launch pad, but there's also those that, that will graduate, if you will, mm -hmm. into something bigger. We call it the launch pad intentionally because there's going to be a landing pad out in the community somewhere. <laughs> We're launching yeah. them there. We're going to land them somewhere else at some point. So. And then hopefully they come back as mentors for oh, yeah. for everybody else who's coming up beneath them. And we should say uh, Launchpad 2 has been a home for people who are telecommuting, who mm -hmm. work for businesses that are in the city or other mm -hmm. parts of the world, and they happen to office at Launchpad uh, as a place to still be connected with other people, not just you know at home with the whole entire coffee maker to themselves. Right. <laughs> it's interesting, we have, a, I think at this point, 26 or so Launchpad members. Uh, and I would venture to say that when we went into this a year ago, I probably knew five of them out of the 26. Oh, wow. Which tells you there's this, uh, there's this undercurrent of entrepreneurship that I hadn't tapped into, uh, that it takes something like that to, to bring uh, to, the, to the surface. And so it's kind of, uh, it's a great thing uh, for our community to see that kind of emergence and the realization that uh, you, may have, uh, you, you may have a great idea, but you're not alone. Come come join the, the crew. Something we've heard about a lot in recent years is the importance of Bemidji really working to retain its uh -huh. talent because so often people come in here, uh -huh. they get their educations, they stay, and then they move out to start their careers. How does the launch pad really fill that need? Hmm. It's a really good question. It, I, when I talked earlier about entrepreneurship being one of the main focus areas of Grand Bemidji, talent, recruitment, growing and keeping and retaining our talent and attracting talent is another one. Uh, and it's a significant, tough, very difficult issue. Um, the talent issue is, uh, uh, the uh, there's two parts to this that I think uh, that the launch pad really helps with. One is people want to live in a town that's cool and funky. Uh, the launch pad is cool yeah. and funky. And I think that is significant. And, and we've, uh, we've uh, started talking about that in, in public intentionally. Because I think, and, and it's not just the launch pad, but other things that have happened downtown. And I always talk about Bemidji Brewing only because it's, it's, there's something about a tap room, for example, that makes the town cool. What's happened along 3rd Avenue right now is really neat. Uh, and it's like all those things start to create a, an environment that says, wow, that's a, that's a really neat t town. Not just a town to start your business in, but also to live and work and raise a family in. And, and so I, my biggest challenge when I, uh, I typically give the, the tours of the community to businesses and people, and, and, I, and I give them a the nickel tour of uh, the airport and Sanford Health and all the amazing assets. We have them downtown, and we end up, 
I always end up at the Sanford Center and I'll stand them on the club seat area of the Sanford Center and I get the same response every time, which is, this is not the town we expected. Which is, we're so much more than that, which we all know, and you get a sense of pride in that, but then you start realizing how many people have the wrong perception of what Bemidji is. Mm -hmm. And so it's actually spurred, and in part because of the conversations that at the entrepreneur meetup uh, about talent and the issues even entrepreneurs have about talent, it spurred a new uh, branding effort called True North that you're gonna see more and more of out of this community coming up. And what I saw with, in terms of talent per, um, retention for our area, what the Entrepreneur Meetup does, I think it provides this, this forum to show um, students in the area, but also yeah. young entrepreneurs in the area that there, there are opportunities here. And if there's mm -hmm. not opportunities that you see with someone in this room, then you get to create your opportunity mm -hmm. here and we're gonna support you. And I think that's the biggest thing. What I'm so excited about having the Entrepreneur Meetup format is that to showcase that message that we can make it here. We can make cre create opportunities here in Bemidji and be able to live right. in this beautiful area and work in meaningful and purposeful jobs at the same time. In fact, Michael Stitzworth from Stitzworth Meats, who, by the way, just got announced as, I believe, the, the state small business of the year uh, for oh, Minnesota, wow. which is a great news, um, likes to say that sometimes in Bemidji you have to create your own job. You want oh. to live here, you want, and that creates an environment that kind of incre creates that sense of entrepreneurship that, boy, I really want to live here. I better create my own job and make it happen. What do you like being about, or I'm sorry, what do you like about being an entrepreneur? <laughs> what is it about that? Why, why do you want to have your own business versus work for somebody else? That's a good question. <laughs> I was an entrepreneur right out of college before I even graduated, so I really don't know what it's like not to be. <laughs> But I love the idea of being able to create the the work life and well your your actual life how you want it to, you get to craft that path and you get to work with really cool people with talent um, and really help share their ideas well for presentation de design specifically that's what I like to do but it's fun being an entrepreneur to create the the life that you want to live I'm not one. <laughs> I'm about the antithesis. No, I shouldn't say that. I, you know, I like to be a social entrepreneur in a sense because if you notice, we try things, even like as an example this. But it is a unique breed, uh, and I think it's a powerful thing, though. Uh, someone who's willing to take the risks, as Sam is and other entrepreneurs are, to say, I care enough about what I, my lifestyle and what I want to do and this, thing, this dream I have that I'm going to risk it all. And I hear story after story from these entrepreneurs of things that they have risked that are, I, I simply couldn't do. And so I think that's a, a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing. I wanna thank you both for joining me today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. And if you wanna learn more about the Launchpad or about Greater Bemidji, you can find them both on Facebook as well as Red Zest Design. Thank you, tune in next time.